Welcome back to Learn with Sam and Ash. In this video, we're going to talk about something really very important. It is talking about comma. In my opinion, it is the most difficult type of punctuation mark. And the reason for that, it is used everywhere, literally every next sentence. And there, it has many forms. You will see in the video how comma can be really confusing. At the same time, it can be easy if we understand when to use it and when not to use it. So let's get started with it. So if you look here, first of all, a comma can change the meaning of a sentence completely. Let me show you an example, a funny one. So if you're writing a CV, you can write something like this. Cooking dogs, singing, etc. People will laugh at you. See, there's just a missing comma in there and meaning completely changes. If you put a comma here, now it, make, it makes sense, right? My interests are cooking, dogs, singing, etc. Earlier, it was really dangerous. So comma can change the meaning and hence we'll make sure that we do not make that mistake. All right. So the first one in this case is a list. When do we use a, a comma in a list, right? Whenever you have a lot of things in there in a sentence that is a form of a list, we use a comma. For your subjects, you may choose English, French and German. So means you're choosing a subject as alternate subject. You can choose between English, French and German. So there's a list, you use comma. Moreover, it's not just a list of words or nouns. It can be a list of activities. For an example, Sam will do the decoration, comma, Ash will buy things, Kate will invite people and John will bring snacks. You see here, we have a list here of activities, activity one, two, three, all of them, right? We use comma in order to uh, show the list in that case. Moreover, we have a, a list where we have three things in there. My friend is young, smart and good natured. What if we remove or add comma somewhere before end? I have seen a lot of places where they add comma before end as well. Both of them are fine. There is no problem. Both of them are fine. No incorrect. Some people say that, oh, you have used end. Why are you using comma? It's fine. If you use or do not use is based on UK and US English. It's called Oxford comma as well. OK. But what if we have only two things as qualities? My friend is young and good natured. In that case, we have only two things. If we remove the comma, then it is correct. So second sentence where we do not have comma, this one is correct. This one is incorrect because it's just two things in a list. We cannot use a comma here. Before we continue, I have something new for you in which an academy is providing free tests that is mock tests and analysis for Senographer exam and the exams are on November 13th. There will be three tests and three analysis. Along with that, we have more tests on 14, 20, 21st, 26 and 27. All this information will be available with time in the description. Do not forget to enroll it. Remember, all these tests are free. All these analyses for, are for free. Why don't you give it a try? An Academy is an amazing website, which is considered a great brand and which they are providing something for free, you know, to give it a try. Right. Let's move to new thing, which is ad adjectives. You can see on the top, on the left, uh, we always keep changing the themes, right? Adjective is something we use to, um, let's say, and um, talk about quality of a noun or um, pronoun let's have a look at it it was a long noisy and annoying journey so journey had a quality which is long noisy and annoying so we use comma in that case so another case, example is he had a bright red toy what if we write it like this he had a bright red toy remember the meaning will completely change now Earlier, it was giving quality of a red, the bright color. Now it has become bright and red both. So in this case, it's not completely wrong, but the meaning has changed. And hence, we'll keep this one as correct. This one is wrong. If we are donating, if we are uh, giving quality to red. So this is bright red and the toy is only one quality. Here we are saying the toy is bright as well as red. Now it's making sense. You understand what I mean by that? Whenever you want to uh, um, give quality to anything, you do not add comma before that. If you have many qualities, you add comma. Next one. This is a very, very funny movie. And some people use very, very twice. In that case, it becomes wrong. So the second one is incorrect. 
do not use very very twice is incorrect if you use this way you are saying it's really very funny movie right so when you use very twice it's fine but with a comma so very very funny movie this is read like that adjectives this is another thing now non-essential information is an information if we remove it sentence won't get much trouble so we'll see how this non-essential information can change things I will give the pen to my sister Mamta, right? Here, let's say, and second one is, I will give my pen to my sister Mamta. Both of them are correct. I'll explain what is the meaning of that. Whenever you mention with a comma, it shows that, that I have a sister who is particular, who is particular in the sense I have only one sister, that's why I put a comma. If I have many sisters, I don't need a comma because this is essential information for non-essential information which is not important we use a comma if it is essential information we do not use a comma so you can see here comma mamta in the sense i have only one sister this is many sister that's why i do not put comma here another example of non-essential information let's see my friend's first book comma the lake was published in 2010 my friend's first book we do not use comma so which one is correct first one and the reason for that is it, the first book can only be one so whenever there is only one or particular thing we use comma because this is not essential if we put a comma here we can continue without comma as well if it was many books but the first book that's why only one comma if it is particular information we put that is non-essential information we put a comma if it is it is essential we do not put comma in there remember this thing Let's see the use of that and which. Really, really very important. Whenever you have a that, you are using that as restrictive pronoun. Now, what is restrictive pronoun? You have to read about it. Come, come to that. Whenever we have that, we do not use any comma. Okay. Uh, about, uh, any close to that, we do not use any comma. But when we use which, we have to use comma before which. Sam's book, which are old are never kept clean here which is non restrictive pronoun now please go through some grammar lesson or anything on google search what non -restric uh, restrictive it because the video will go longer if i start going for pronouns instead of comma so whenever you have a, a comma uh, i think i uh, made a mistake here hence no comma there will be a comma for sure hence a comma right here so before which you have to have a comma good Interruptions. Whenever you interrupt some sentence in between, when we have some interruption, we use a comma. Your these, um, okay, your books has been frankly impressive. So instead of this, your books, let's write here, there's a mistake. Your books has been frankly impressive. Now let's say here, the house, once we finally found it, was very costly. So if you look here, this is, interruption if we the house was very costly makes sense once we finally found it is interruption or extra information we put comma before and after that both the places whenever there's interruption in a sentence we put comma okay let's continue introductions whenever we start something with extra apart from the main sentence we put a comma before that for an example yes we expect to attend the webinar done another example honestly why would you do that so honestly is an introduction we use another word in order to introduce and that's why honestly why would you do that it's another way of saying that to be honest i don't like this idea again it is an introduction we use another another phrase or sentence to introduce our sentence that's why we say honestly to be or, or, or let's say to be honest in my opinion the movie was a disaster again this thing sometimes we remember use however moreover all of the places you should put a comma to make it correct this is not just for english for ielts as well it makes sense right okay after thoughts whenever you say something after the sentence in order to uh, give information about it or let's say your reviews or views about it you use a comma i found the test rather easy to be honest now look to be honest before that, you have to put a comma. It's an extra or let's say afterthought. Another example, you will be joining us today, won't you? So want you is an afterthought. You're adding information to it. So that's why you'll be joining us today, won't you, is an afterthought. That's why comma before that. Good. She purchased the book, but she hated it later. This is a compound sentence. Now, what is a compound sentence when two independent clauses combined it forms a compound sentence 
always use a comma before an independent sentence. She purchased the book, comma, but she hated it later. So we use but before the but we use a comma. I lost my job, so I can't afford the fees. If you look here, I lost my jo job and I can't afford the fees are two separate clauses, in, uh, both independent clauses. They don't depend on each other. If we remove so, so it makes sense together. I mean, they, they make sense by themselves. So we put a comma in there in compound sentences. Exceptions are there. I flew to the conference and she drove. Now, if you look here, I think this should be a lot other than that. Whenever we have a short after clause, right? She drove is a very short sentence. Whenever you have very short sentence of two to three words, you are not uh, obliged to put a comma before and in that case. Remember, whenever in any uh, compound sentence, whenever the next end part or let's say another clause is short, we do not put comma. Okay, so this is very short. We don't need any comma in that. Simple sentences are simple. We don't need comma here. She purchased the book, but not the journal. Now here, this but or are used for compound sentences, but you can use in simple sentences as well because it's a list. Book or not the journal is a list and hence a simple sentence, not compound sentence. I know some people are thinking compound sentences means or or but uses. No, not really. You look here or book or the journal again not read it again when i say uh, when i say compound sentence it has to be complete sentence should make complete sense here it's not making complete sense because it's just a noun here using or or but hence it's a simple sentence we don't need any comma in simple sentences right complex sentences when we have dependent clause that comes before the independent clause what do we do here we put a comma let me make it clear. Complex sentence is where we have one dependent clause that is one depending on the independent one and one independent clause. Look here. When the whenever we have the dependent one first, we put a comma because of the traffic. Our flight has been delayed. This one is an independent sentence. This one is dependent sentence, dependent clause, not sentence. Sorry. In here, we put comma after the dependent clause. Whenever we have we begin with two independent uh, two dependent clause, we put a comma as well after both of them. If you find a good book and exercise for a few hours each day, you will be you will get better score. Now you will get better score in independence clause. However, both of them are dependent and hence both of them should be together. And then we put a comma after that. So see your comma is here. So complex sentence are a bit complex in a way. So we put comma only after both of the dependent clauses are over. When the independent clause comes before the dependent clause, what to do in that case? Let's let's see an example. You shouldn't be reading if you can't see without your glasses. Look, what have we done? We removed the comma completely. Whenever we have independent clause coming before the dependent clause, we remove the comma completely. Remember this part in complex sentences. One has to be dependent. Another has to be independent. In this case, when independent comes first, we remove the comma. Good. The guests who were all friends of the uh, president refused to speak. If the dependent clause occurs in the middle of the sentence, see earlier we said dependent clause coming first, then we said later. And what if it is in the middle? If it is in the middle, we put comma to in in order to justify this is our dependent clause. The guests who were all friends of the president is something which is extra and also dependent. We put comma before and after that. Okay, I know this is a little bit complicated, but please try to understand using the statement or uh, the example. Another example, the guests who arrived early were greeted nicely by the host. Now look here, we have same thing where the dependent clause is coming in the middle. But why are we not putting comma? Because this is an irrelevant information earlier. Let me show you. This was relevant information without this. It won't make any sense for the guest or the sentence. If we remove this information who arrived early were greeted who arrived early is an extra information. If we remove it, it won't make much sense. It won't make any difference. So whenever we have non relevant or irrelevant information in the middle in the form of dependent clauses, we don't need any comma. This is a little bit complicated, but try to understand through the sentences. Whenever you have degree and certification, right? Degree and certification, you put comma before the degree. The report was prepared by Christopher Smith, comma, PhD. So he was a PhD or engineer or MD, whatever. Before the degree, you have to use a comma. 
whenever you have direct address to someone, for an example, in this case, Ash, we could not have done it without you, Ash. So we are saying to Ash, whenever you have direct address, we put a comma. Another example, thank you, Ash, for your support. See, we are saying, we are thanking directly to Ash. So this is what we do, we put comma. If it is in the middle of the sentence, both sides of the person. If it is in the end, just before the person. Ash has to be separated in here because of the direct access. You can see from the example. And this was all about commas. I know it was a bit difficult to understand, a bit complicated. Go through the video one more time. I think that will make sense. You create your own sentences and uh, also search them in any website or search them in Google if it is making sense. Have a nice time. I'll see you tomorrow with another video connected to punctuation itself. We are trying to finish all the punctuations in the coming six or seven videos. Take care. Have a nice time.